Hello guys, it's that time again. We will be doing painting for beginner at 9 p.m. California time. Well, today we had a vote between Winston Logan, Storm, Hobie Brown, and Gambit, right? And apparently, The winner is, well, we did it on Facebook and Instagram all together. So the total we got, the final result we have is Gambit came out to be five votes, while Western Logan has also five votes. Hobby Brown came out to be nine vote, and Storm has ten vote. I honestly didn't expect Storm to win, but Storm actually came up to be first place. So today we will be doing Storm, but at the same time. We might be able to do Hobie Brown too. This is the reason because of originally I thought that Hobie's gonna win, but Storm came out to be first place. That was very, very unexpected. And since I'm gonna paint Hobie and Storm anyway, and the skin color is very, very close. I decided to try out Storm earlier before the video just to see if I can get that skin tone down. And uh, I'll be honest with you, I wasn't able to. Well, it really depends how what color you, you want the skin to be. You want to be your own skin color for, for Storm or do you want to be matching the Marvel Legend Storm color? Marvel Legend Storm color is a bit on the redder, brownish side. And my color came out to be a bit more on the darker brown side. The good thing is this head sculpt is extremely, extremely easy to paint. Let me wipe off the Axis makeup powder just to see what color we have underneath. I was playing around with the makeup powder. It was kind of fun. For those people who follow my previous video, you will know that I use this makeup powder very, very often. They're fun. They're really, really fun. And they're very useful. And very, very easy to fix your mistakes. Extremely easy. Okay? Now, for anyone who, uh, who haven't seen the head, this is the head. This is the original head. It's beautiful. Uh, I don't even think it's necessary to change it at all. And this is the custom one. It's just different take. I found a comment from in my Instagram uh, under the Gambit picture. Someone say, say what did what he say? Actually, it's n not better. <laughs> I find it very interesting. Well, you know what? The goal isn't to make it better. The goal is to have choices. The goal is to have choices, okay? And at the same time, why do we always go custom head? This is just my take. Because mass production, the detail for mass production can only go so far. And sometimes I like options. I like the detail. I want my figure to have multiple uh, design based on different artists. You know, a lot of people like Jim Lee, a lot of people like Jason Fabbook, Sean Murphy, and some of these very, very popular, famous artists. And they prefer that style over the other, right? 
So um, it's really up to you, to you, okay? It's really up to you what you like. And the reason why I picked this head is because, well, it has a lot more detail on the hair as you can see. And most important thing is that little thunder earring it has on Storm. For example, the one on Marvel Legend is just a very simple shape versus originally from the cartoon it has something more like this and i thought you know this one cut has all the ingredients that i wanted so this is the reason why i chose it another reason well this is just personal okay just personal choices uh the one that come with the figure it's a great head sculpt it even have a really really good uh paint well i think it's a print on the pupil i like it but the only thing that kind of um throw me off is she looks a bit lazy let me see if i can uh let you guys can the camera focus a bit yeah she has a little bit of a lazy eyes which is pretty cool you know it gives her a little bit of a personality but i like my storm to have a like that stronger bigger eyes Am I going to draw the eyeball? Um, yeah, I'm going to draw the eyeball. Um, I would still like to try to match this this color more. Like some of you guys seen my previous video. I'm not very good at color matching. If I can get a color that looks exactly like this, you know, I would definitely use it. But I was playing around with it. I only It only took me, I will say, less than 30 minutes to paint this head. It was very, very quick. And I'll show you guys my technique very, very soon. Okay, um, I should have another one. I can't believe I didn't prepare it. Okay, so let's go on. Let's, let's get on with it. Let me pop the original one back on. I don't know how the live video works. Do you, when people log in, do they start watching based from where I started or do they start watching from where it started? Well, uh, just to give everyone the 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 countdown again okay gambit came out to be five vote logan western logan came out to be five vote hobby brown had nine votes and storm ended up with 10 votes so storm actually won for the day okay um this it was calculated based on instagram and facebook both add up together i throw up the uh, the vote fairly late today and then I really give everyone a chance to really actually uh, put in their the choice of voting, but it is what it is, okay? Uh, depends how fast we finish Storm. We just might be able to do a little bit of hobby, okay? So other than that, let's get on with it. Let me uh, Let me pop hobby head on the figure real quick. So you guys can see what he looked like. He's really cool. I actually have two different versions. And uh, this week I possibly be able to paint both of them. Hopefully. Hopefully. Uh, I'm getting the hair from my pile. Give me a second. Hit this. Cut something off real quick. the head this one's really cool I have two different versions one by STL co uh, collectors custom collectors the other ones by um, still have to remember his name is I know it's uh, Trong Toy Trong Trong Tran Trong Toy Trang Tong 331 I'll, I'll post the name on there uh, I couldn't put, really pronounce it properly Okay, I'm sorry, but I'll, I'll, I'll hopefully I can video can uh, video chat with him one day and get his proper pronunciation down. Okay, so that's the hobby head. Okay, and uh, <clears throat> let me explain a couple things first. Okay, um, first of all, the original head will come in resin gray. This is the color. Okay, and I chose to spray can it white I use white scar Citadel 
a spray can. This, this is what I found from local hobby shop. So this is what I use. Okay, so I sp sprayed it into white. Looks like that. The reason why I sprayed it into white was because if you look at this uh, head, another thing is when you, you when you paint something, um, unless you're really eager, you know, you only got a little bit of time, you get off from work, you just want to get down to it. Other than that, I would highly suggest people really, you know, give some thought and plans and brainstorm before you actually start painting, okay? For example, a storm, if that's the color of storm you're going to, uh, you're going to paint, you'll notice that her hair is white, her eyes is white, and her earring is yellow, right? So those are the light color. At the same time, her skin is dark. So if we're going to paint the skin dark to begin with, or even primer it black or brown to begin with, you will, you will have a hard time trying to paint white over the darker color or darker primer. Does that make sense? And that's a good thing about primer, they come in different color. And I choose white because any color goes on white. But to paint white on a black or brown primer, it will be extremely tough. You will re it will require multiple layers just to get the white, solid white on that dark primer color. Same thing with yellow. Somehow, yellow happened to be the hardest color to, for me to paint, okay? On black, on brown, on red, on anything. Actually, resin is okay, but darker color, it's, it's, it's much harder to really paint it on. But to paint yellow on the white primer, it's extremely easy, extremely easy, okay? So first thing I did was I just primered the whole entire thing white. And then I mixed my brown. Let me show you my brown. This is the brown I have, the leather brown, okay? Like I said, I didn't go to the store and prepare paint for, the, for her. Um, I just used whatever I have. So what I mixed was, I mixed a bit of leather brown and a bit of flat red. And the color turned out to be pretty okay, so I started painting. And what I felt doing was, the first layer I paint was too dark. And I keep on adding the same layer on it. Three layers later, it looks something similar to this. And then that's when I realized, well, the color seems to be a bit on the darker side. I need a little bit more red, a little bit lighter. So I start mixing the color much lighter. And when I applied it on, it was too late. So I highly recommend that for anyone who want to paint, you know, mix your color right and um, just do it right from, the, do the right color right from the start, okay? I'm okay with this color, it's not bad. I can definitely work with this color, okay? Um, so after I apply the skin brown over it, remember use watery color, watery uh, brown, and just slowly dab into the hairline. This head sculpt it was sculpted so well that if you have watery paint, you dab little by little into it, you'll notice I, I pretty much got it perfect. It looks pretty good. I mean, I can do a little bit more touch up just to get it get it in better, but I did this whole thing without wearing magnified glass, which is pretty impressive, okay? Um, and then you do that, and then after that, you do the black eye line. The black eye line, let me show you, this is really cool. Let me see if I can get it. The black eye line is pretty much sculpted on. The eyelashes and the eyebrow, it's pretty much sculpted on. And it sticks out extremely noticeable. So you are, and since you primary the head white to begin with, you pretty much just have to color over the eye, eyelashes black. The bottom lashes take a little bit more of effort, 
but the top lash was extremely easy to do. Okay, so right now the eyes are white. I kind of just want to leave it white overnight. And tomorrow when I have a little bit more time, or maybe later on tonight, if I have a little bit more time, I will draw in the, the pupil. But right now, let me enjoy this white eyes for a bit. I really like it. And then the yellow, just yellow. So the reason why we're not doing tutorial on Storm today, but I'm, I'm actually verbally explaining it to you, is because it's that easy. It's really, really easy, okay? And I only have one that I primer. Let me see, um, which one is this one? This one is the same size or is this a little bit bigger? I printed a few different sizes. Let me see if this is the same size. Hold on, let me check. Yeah, I think this, we might be able to work on this one. Let me see. is the one okay you know what let's just do it okay give me a few give me a minute or two let me go spray a white just to let's just just have some fun let's just paint it I want to show people how quick it is because it's not gonna take a lot of time it's actually very very simple Actually, very, very simple. Another thing is, you know, when you got the head sculpt, there's going to be some support trees, support lines right here. You might want to cut it off. Uh, do it gently, carefully. The sculpt is very, very detailed. I just use exacto knife. Slowly, carefully cut it off. I don't know. Okay. Yep, like that. Yeah, as you can see, the eyelashes extended out very far. It's a beautiful eyelash. The eyebrow, very noticeable. Okay, yeah, let's, let's paint this. Uh, let me go out and primer real quick and I'll be right back. Hang there guys. Might as well do this and show everyone since you guys want to see it. At the same time, I'll put the custom head on the figure so you guys can see that too. Yeah, poster putties, it's gonna be your best friend, trust me. Yeah, I still have people contact me and say, oh, does your head come with joints? Um, does it just pop on and off? And I said, no, it's hollow. He said, what? It's hollow? Why don't you make joints? I'm like, yeah, if I make joints, they're going to have to deal with people who want to use it for Mayfax, want to use it for uh, use it for Marvel Legion, want to use it for, I don't know what, Marvel Select. And next thing you know, the Mesco, I, I can't please everybody, you know, make it hollow much easier. Okay, I'm going to go out and spray this real quick. Put on my barbecue sticks. I always have poster putty, okay? Barbecue sticks. And you know what else you need? Get a long, get those super long barbecue uh, sticks, those kebab uh, size, and just get a pencil sharpener. Cut the barbecue stick in half, and you have two barbecue sticks. Yeah. Extremely easy. Okay, I'm gonna go out there and spray real quick. Hang there, wait for me. I'll be right back.
Okay, we're back. So yeah, here's the spray I use. Um, if you can find something that's more flat white, go for it. This white score has, it's not as flat as I wanted, but it does the job, okay? Um, another thing about working with custom hits, so most of them these days, either they are resin cast from mold, or they are 3D printed straight from the machine. Once you primer, and the, the reason why primer is so important, okay, is because once you primer, you will be able to see all the little flaws that are required to be fixed. For example, you notice under the chin, there's some lumps. Those are the support tree from the 3D printing. And under the rear hair on the bottom, okay? So once you primer it, you will be able to see it much noticeably. And good thing about the, this spray can is that it's already dry. I just sprayed it right now, like what, 30 seconds ago? And back and talking and touching. It's very, very useful. Very easy to work with. I'm going to get my stamp paper set. I got my fine sponge stamp paper. Just going to slowly send it down. Yeah, um, if you do commission or you paint for your figure and you're painting custom fig and custom heads, always, always make it a habit, primer it. Primer it, okay? Um, not just primer it. Highly recommend. Use dish soap, wash it, or just hand soap, wash it. Wash it thoroughly. Thoroughly. Wash it, dry it. Wait until it's fully dry. And then primer it. I know that's a step that a lot of people skip. Especially uh, people who does commission. Because they have to paint a lot of hair on a, on a daily basis for, you know, that's what they do for a living. Why is it so important to wash your head sculpt? Well, if it's a resin cast, such as something like this, just your regular, um, typical cream white resin, or it's something like this, 3D printed. This is a Black Adam. It's really cool too. One of the newest Black Adam head sculpt. Yep. Okay. The 3D printed. <coughs> Um, often they have a little bit of some type of chemical on it and that it could be oil, it could be uh, chemical, it could be the person who ship it to you, their, their hand oil, it could be anything, it could be anything. And that little oil will affect the result of the paint. You might not notice it, it might not notice it right away or after you paint it, but over time, when the paint starts to chip in pieces, like a whole piece of paint just come off, that's when you know that the, the skull was not washed or cleaned up prior, before the paint. Does that make sense? Okay, so I'm here cleaning up the head sculpt right now, just to make sure I have a clean head to work with. This one is a uh, medium. Medium grid. Yeah, this this has called, uh, we just uh, printed it this morning. And let me, let me show you something really cool. <clears throat> Many people think that oh, 3D printing is so easy, right? You just press the button and, and print. No, not really. You have to set it up too, okay? And not only that, many times when you get a head sculpt or done, designed by the sculptor, it could be oversized, it could be undersized, you don't know. So you, you really have to go out there and just size it yourself. Yeah, I printed like three different sizes, three different sizes to find a size that I'm actually happy with. that I'm satisfied with. Okay, let me check. I should have one more. I should have one more storm.
Okay. It's pretty much cleaned up. Let me go ahead and spray it again. Spray another layer just to finalize it. Okay, I'll be right back. All right, we're done. Okay, this is the second one, second layer. Let me adjust the lights. Yeah, that might be better. So now, just in case, let me blow dry real quick. <clears throat> okay, I think we're pretty good. All right, let's go ahead and Start a paint. If you guys have any questions, feel free to ask too. I'll see what I can do to answer at the same time. Okay, now let's get down to color mixing. Since the color I mixed earlier was not the, the color I want, I don't know, hopefully this time, second round, we get a closer color. Let's start with brown first. That's what I did earlier. And let's go with a little bit of riff next. This is always the fun part, right? <laughs> or not really. A little bit of water. Let's mix it. Okay, it's still very, very brown. We only add a little bit of red in there. I can be a little bit more brave. I'm not an expert at color mixing, nor am I an expert on painting. Just painting for as a beginner, learning along with everyone. Okay, this color looks very promising. And this color is definitely much, much uh, lighter than the one I mixed earlier. I do like it. I do like it. Make sure my hand's not too dirty. Okay. 
All right, let's apply this color on. Okay, so make sure the color is very, very wet. I started with uh, the hair first, hairline first. Notice how wet it is. It's very, very watery. It kind of just goes inside, go along the, flow along the hair. Notice that? You don't even have to be too careful because the paint is so watery. I'm not even wearing magnified glass. See, it kind of just flow into the gap between the hair and the head. Yeah, control the, the thickness of your paint is the key. To me, that's the biggest secret in painting. Most people think they just squeeze some paint and ready to paint and they wonder why the paint's so thick. You gotta thin it. You gotta thin it. Okay. If you make a little bit of a mistake, for example, over there, don't worry. Okay. This is only the first layer. It's very, very light, very, very watery. Okay. I mix with water again. Make sure my paint is very, very watery. And I test out my hand. Get that excess paint off. This time I'm gonna start from the back. From the rear. And the consisting, the consistency of this layer, this round, it's a bit thicker. But don't worry, it does the job. The goal is to paint along the hair. So far, I'm liking the brown. It has a red color in it, which I like. Okay, we went all around. Let's take a look. Very, very watery paint. <laughs> Holding your breath, yeah, yeah. So am I. But it's really not that hard. You don't have to be that careful as long as your paint is very watery. It's like playing, uh, it's like painting Gundam, you know, the panel line. You kind of just dip your paint in there, it will run by itself. Okay? So we did that. Back to watering, watering the paint again. Okay, this time we're gonna paint around, let's paint around the eyes. Make sure your paint, get the extra paint off. Okay, that's the bottom. Let's do the other side. See, the good thing about primering it white to begin with is that now you don't have to paint the hair. Well, you could paint the hair, make it even more white. But the most important thing is you don't have to paint the eyes anymore. The eyes are already white to begin with. Look at that. Okay. Because your paint is very, very watery, don't worry if you make a mistake. Everything's going to be this skin color anyway. Okay. Now, let's paint along the years. I like to start from the rear. 
I'm gonna change the stick to something shorter. It's kind of in my way. Oh, there goes my son. He's crying, little bad boy. Yeah, he wanna play with his grandpa. Love his grandpa. Okay. Too much paint. Okay, now when it comes to the earring area, like we what we did with the hair, just carefully let the water, let the ink, watery ink, sink in. Okay, the extra paint, kind of push it under the chin, and just leave it there. Okay. Don't forget the other side of the earring. There's a little bit of chin, a little bit of inside the head, the ears. Okay, so that earring is covered. Let's work on the other ear. Okay, let's find a good position where you feel comfortable on holding. Always make sure you're comfortable. You're confident. Because if you're not, you make a mistake. You'll have to do it all over again. Right? You don't want that. You want water, baby? Yeah, cold. Cold water. Okay, my daughter's asking for water. Here you go. Can I have it back after? Yeah, I'm training my water. I'm training my water. I'm training my daughter to drink water. Yeah, drinking water, they gotta make that a habit. Drinking water should be a habit. Yeah, when I was young, my parents never, never forced me to drink water. I never understood the importance of water. Okay, let's finish up the year. If you want, you can even color the ears right now. Might as well. Beautiful ears. Yeah, STL Custom. I have to say that this person, I don't know his name, but this sculptor, he sculpted the ears very nice. Okay, let's make sure we color the other ear too. Yeah, holding breath, huh? Yeah, holding breath is definitely another key. I used to swim in high school, swimming team. Holding breath, it was like a thing. Okay, so we got the raccoon eyes, we got the ear cover, we got, we got the head, the hairline taken care of. Okay, now we can pretty much get a thicker brush and start painting the, the skin, the whole entire head. Okay. Let's pick a brush. Uh, which brush should I use today? Something a little bit thicker. Hmm. Maybe this is good. Not quite as flat as I would like it to be. I should be able to get to the area nicely. Let me see, any other choices? Or is this the final choice? Okay, this one's pretty good too. Hmm, I have these, between these two, huh? Let's go with the round one. Yeah, I don't even know the difference between these brushes. You gotta really just, for me, try to find out, okay? Load wet, 
white, okay? Notice the color is still very, very watery. The paint's still very, very watery. It's still the first layer. Yeah, I miss the Gundam days. Gunpla, everything's airbrush. You hardly use hand brush. Taping here, masking tape there every single day. Oh, goodness. Always mask tape when it comes to painting. Drive me nuts. I give so much respect for those people who make Gunpla now. I couldn't do it anymore. Don't worry about the, the brush stroke at this point. This is only the first layer. You're going to, it's gonna look crazy. It's not gonna look perfect. It's only the first layer. It's gonna look like very uneven color. I'm just coloring the white area to fill it up. gets close to the ear, earring part kind of give it some space don't get too close to it we're not ready yet to do all the fine detail okay the paint is very very watery this is only the first layer don't worry too much about the imperfection Just try to have as less bubble as much as possible. Once the bubble dry, you're gonna have a little pimple. Make sure you cover up all the white area with paint. I know it's not perfect. Okay. This is just the first layer. So far the colors are already looking lighter than the custom one that I did earlier today. I'm quite happy with it. Okay. Now it's pretty much dry. It dries really quick. The paint's not thick. The water evaporates much quicker. Second layer. Oh, is it third layer? Yeah, third layer. We're doing third layer now. You see now the color come out to be a lot more solid than earlier. This time you can kind of go closer to the hairline.
Okay. Well, this is the third layer. Yep. Looks kind of weird, right? Don't worry too much. Because the paint is very, very thin, very, very watered down. Okay. Now, let's see what happens when we do the fourth layer. It should even up a lot more. The fourth layer is definitely looking good. Just be patient. This is like the fifth layer now. Fifth, five very, very thin layer of paint. Just letting this paint slowly build up. color still lighter huh I might as already lighter than the one I did earlier at this point anything we added into it is not gonna make that much different but we're still going to try Still going to try. As long as lighter than earlier, then hey, we're making progress, right? I'm adding a little bit of yellow, which I didn't do for the in the first time. Okay, right now since the paint is still so thin, we're playing on little by little. Even when we made it thin and lighter, it's not going to make that much different. But we'll see.
I do like this second second Hisco color better than the first one. I can tell that my paint is starting to dry up a bit. Gotta mix a little bit more water in there. Another key why we thin the paint so much is it blends in better so you will have less brush stroke. Okay, yeah. I'm liking it. I really like it. What do you guys think? Pretty good? Let's add another layer of this color. I'm, I like it. I do like it. So a little bit of red. A little bit of yellow. That's where the magic is at. You notice I'm purposely not touching all the area like eyes and earring. We can go back and do that later on. Add a layer, build up the layer on those area later on. Right now, let's just get the the bigger area taken care of first. The paint is still very watery, still blending really well. Good. Oh, it's getting dry. Hurry up and wet it. Okay, went all around the head. Back and forth, back and forth. Okay. This is the color we got. Let me blow dry it. I'm gonna use cold water, uh, cold, cold air. Okay. 
Let's take a look. Here's what we got. This is the color we got. Versus what we did this afternoon. This one's definitely darker. This one's more like a closer to her hand, but still a few shade darker. Which is really okay compared to the original. Let's take a look. Definitely between the two. Original definitely a lot lighter. Okay, well I'm happy with this color. Now, since we did, we got most of the skin color taken care of. Let's go back and touch up on the little detail. Paint's very, very watery. Just let the watery paint take care of those hairline. Oh, yeah, Let's camera focus. My paint is very, very watery. So let's just say, even I just did the head right now, I still have time to catch up to the cheeks while the paint is still somewhat wet so they can blend well together. That's the benefit of painting with very, very wet paint. Got a little dust right there. Well, that's a dry paint. benefit of wet paint. Because at first, in the beginning when I was doing hand brushing, I was afraid to see brush strokes. But when you know how to control the thickness of the paint, you eliminate that problem. Airbrush is good, but airbrush is very, very trouble to deal with. I'd rather hand brush. You can do it indoor. That's another benefit. Okay, now we can go back and touch up on the eye area. Build up those layers like what we did earlier. 
don't want to go too far. Just stay around the eyes. Whoa, I made a mistake there, you see? Did I get into the eye, the white eyes? Maybe a little bit, huh? When did I do that? Huh. The big no-no. We'll have to go back and touch up. Okay, let's paint the ears. Mistake do happen. I hope showing this video give you guys a confidence on painting. It's really not that hard. And this investment you invested in, such as paint, color of the paint you get, brushes you get, you can use it to paint many, many heads. If you take good care of your tools, you clean your brushes after, leave your paint at a cool place, it will last a good long time. Okay, see? Pretty easy, right? Pretty simple? Okay, now let's move on to the earring. We have a yellow, it's just a regular flat yellow. Squeeze some yellow here where everyone can see. I have multiple, this is my big circle is where I wash my brushes. I got my napkin right next to it, damp it, okay? And I have this multiple circle here that have this clear water to mix my paint when I use different color, okay? Now, since we primer this, storm with white to begin with look at this and show you how easy it is that's the first layer see the little thunder sign already right okay to the other side There you go. Pretty easy, right? Just to be safe, let's do two layer, okay? Two layer. The paint's already dry. Let's add a second layer of yellow on it so that yellow earring will pop. Looks pretty good next to her skin tone. It's a great contrast, okay? Then the paint again, you don't want the paint to be too thick. Second layer. Yep, I'm very happy with two layer. Okay, just gonna leave it at that. I see a little white spot of the ear next to the earring. Let me go ahead and touch up on that. Here you go. How you guys like it? Pretty cool? Yeah. Okay. So that's a earring. That's why we primary white. That's how important primary white to begin with is so important. 
okay? You really gotta think, what's the majority color? What's the lightest color? And base up, base the head on that. Base the primer on that, okay? Originally, I was thinking, oh, should I just, should I just primer in brown? You know, the face is brown, but no. White, okay? Now the eyes is white. Now let's go ahead and do the eye lashes. Now we're gonna use black. You know, I wanna I wanna ask you guys something really interesting. Her hair is so fluffy white, okay? Storm's hair is so fluffy white. It's beautiful. And when she does her thunder weathering thing, her eyes turn white too, right? It's really cool. Okay, so she got beautiful white hair and her eyes turn white, but why is it her eyelashes and her eyebrow black? I hardly see any, I, I rarely see any picture of her eyelashes white. Almost none. I find that, I find that very interesting. Not that it's important. Okay, now I'm gonna do the eyelashes and uh, eyelashes in the eyebrow. Okay, I'm gonna wear my my magnify glass glasses. Okay. Let me show you guys again the one I use. I don't get sponsored by this company. I just bought it from Amazon. Okay, it's this Yoke Tosun. Okay, it has two level of LED right here okay I'm gonna be off the camera for now but I show you guys my paint water it down and do one eyelashes at a time I'll be right back Okay, so what I did was the eyebrow. I did the I did her left eyebrow first. Okay, gonna draw her upper eyelashes next. Almost there. Her eyelash is very, very long. Okay. Her upper, her left upper eyelashes. If it comes out a little bit, it's okay because we're gonna touch up with the skin color since we still have it there. This is only the first layer. I'm gonna work on the right eyelash, uh, right eyebrow next. Okay, here's her right eyebrow, left eyebrow, right eyebrow. Oh, interesting, huh, Can't say Maybe before she got the power, her hair was black. Well, I don't know. Anyone know, this, was there a comic based on Storm's origin? I'm curious now. She's really cool.
I'm touching up on the lift eyelashes again. All right, let's see what we got here. I can't believe I was so uh, not careful and got a little bit of paint inside her white eyes. That defeat the whole purpose of primary and white. But it's okay, we're gonna do some touch up right now. Let me paint the eye white again. Squeeze some white here. And then make sure my brush is clean. Since we were, we're using black, use some of my clean water mixed with white, my white. Okay. I'm gonna use my magnified glasses. Be right back. Okay, so fix the eyes again, make it back to white. I noticed that there's some skin that was not touched. I'm gonna go ahead and touch up right now. Yeah, after wearing magnified glasses, I can see a lot more uh, area that require a little bit more touch up. Do that right now. Let me see if I can uh, leave this head here for you guys to see real quick. Well, I go get myself a phone charger real quick. I'll be right back.
All right, I'm back. Got my portable charger. Let's go ahead and get the phone charged up again. Okay. Let's continue. How are you guys liking it so far? Not bad, right? Okay. It's not as red as the original head. But it's doable. Okay, back to painting the eyelashes. Using the black paint again. Water it down, little by little, layer by layer. So I have, I remember that there are people contact me and say, when drawing the ice is the hardest part. Well, yes, the hardest part is drawing the ice because that requires the most focus. But if you have a magnified glasses, you will be able to, you'll, you will be able to see things a lot more closer, bigger and clearer. Since you're zoomed in, obviously that's what the magnified glasses does. But another thing that's very important is control the, the thickness of the paint. I wish I can show you here, because I don't want to mess it up. But the, the more watery your paint is, the easier you will be able to draw thinner lines. Okay, I got the right eyes done, the upper eyelashes. You find it? Yeah, I found it. Thanks, hon. Yeah, I'm on life. Still alive. Okay, you see the the eyes right now. You see how much that bottom the top eyelashes extended out? Very, very far. You can see it from the rear top. So it's very easy to paint. Really, really easy to get the black eye, uh, uh, eyelash line on it. Okay, I'm gonna I'm going to do the other side now. Okay, here's an example. Let me take my glasses off. Hopefully, you guys can see this. Okay. You see that white? That's also part of the eyelashes that I have not painted on. You see how much it sticks out? That's how much space and volume you have to play around with. That's why I like this head sculpt. It's very, very easy to paint the eyelashes. This is a lot of space before it even touches the eyeball. It's almost like one sixteen of an inch. Okay. Almost there. Okay, let's 
take a look at, at the result. So we got both eyelashes done, the upper eyelashes done, the eyebrows taken care of. Now we just need to draw the bottom eyelashes. Sculptor out there, if you want to draw, you want to sculpt eyelashes, make sure they extend it out. But at the same time, you extend it out upwards. You don't want to extend it out forward, which will also make the eyes look small. Now, let's go back again. Why I like this head sculpt is because, especially the eyes, because the original eyes, it has that lazy eyes, which is fine, but that's, it, it, which is like that stuck up, you know, I'm above, I got the power, I'm a queen, you know, which is nice. I like it. It's very nice. At the same time, I kind of want a cute animated look storm with the big old ass eyes. Pretty, young, punkish. Yep. Okay, now we're going to work on the bottom eyelashes. Let's see how much volume we have. The bottom eyelashes. It's not as much space. But we'll manage with, with magnified glasses. Remember, thin your paint. Okay, very, very watery. And be patient. Almost there. Okay. Let's take a look. The bottom eyelashes is done. I kind of leave a bit of white, a, a bit of more white inside the eyes. You want to call this done? Yeah, you can. It's pretty close. You can start adding some makeup based on how you like her to wear her makeup. A little bit of purple, dark purple eyeshadow. A little bit more of eyeshadow. Um, lipstick. Notice I did the year last. So the year has the least amount of paint layer. And by doing it last, it kind of give that year a bit of a redder, lighter color because the ear is thinner. So it's supposed to be able to see through due to sun. Kind of give that realistic look. Okay. Compared to the first one we did this afternoon. Now, since you already have the color mixed, if you want, you can just paint the hand, the hand too, to match the skin color you have. I might as well do that right now. So we take the hands apart, right? Left hand and right hand. Okay. And use the thicker brush. The wider brush. Our skin paint is still here. Our color is thicker. 
I really should dishwash it first to get all the excess oil out. But this is just for a paint tutorial. I'm just going to go with it. Now we have a hand that matches the skin tone we just did. Gonna powder powder the bottom a little bit to make it brighter and lighter. And wait until the paint is dry, the color will automatically be more flat. Just have to wait. Leave one hand aside. I forgot what um, hand or accessory this stone come with. Oh, look, there's now there's fingernails. Might give fingernail a paint up too later on. Give it some medic here. The reason why I'm painting the inside is because I want to create a layer of texture on the surface of this hand. So later on when I work with the makeup powder to lighten up the inside of the hand, it will be a lot easier because the powder will have something to grab. Hope that makes sense. I wonder what fingernail color am I going to use? Black? Yeah, wait well, until you see me do the, the hand. It's going to be really awesome. I can't wait to show you guys. Okay, so right now it's a little bit wet. The paint needs to dry up. Let me show you the other hand. The other hand is already somewhat dry. See? It's already dry. It's not shiny. So the right hand, will, when it dry up, it's going to look just like the left. Yeah, Vallejo paint usually end up pretty dry. Pretty flat. And that's a good thing. Okay? We're going to leave it on the side. Let's go back and look at the head. So right now the head is pretty much done. We can do we can do the uh, the eyeball the pupil. I just I don't know what colors are eyes. Let me, let's see. What does the toy eyes have? If anyone know you wanna you care to leave a comment on what color her eyes is. It looks pretty blue. Let me look at my use my magnifying glass. Glasses. Okay, they're they're blue. Okay, they're blue. Okay, before we do the eyes, there's one more thing I wanna I wanna do. I wanna add it onto her lips her lipstick. Okay. Give her a, a darker color lipstick. To break that lip, the sexy lip, away from just her skin color. Hmm. Now we gotta mix that color too. Like a dark burgundy maybe? Let's try that. Let's do red. And a little bit of, tiny bit of black I would say. A little bit of brown, maybe. Looks pretty good. A little bit more brown. Okay, looking pretty red. Want to make it burgundy. Um, we could use a little bit of black. You know what? Black? Should we do black or 
Maybe dark blue. Let's see if I have dark blue here. I have regular blue. Okay, we're gonna do ice blue anyway. Might as well take out blue. This is just a regular blue. Just a little bit of blue. Let's see what color we get. Oh, there it is. I like it. Okay, I can work with this. That's a beautiful lip color. I hope it show. Okay, let's give that a try. This is the color. Yeah, look at that color. Beautiful. Okay, magnify glasses. Water down the paint. Almost there. Bear with me a little bit longer. I want to fill up that lip real good. Okay, let's take a look. I did a bottom lip. Okay, did the bottom lip. The note it's not quite noticeable, but it's there. It's darker than the skin. This is just one layer. Let me go ahead and work on the upper lip. Almost there. Okay. We got the upper lip done too. I'm liking this color. Let me use this color and draw some eyeshadow. Just to keep it simple. Okay, right, be right back. Almost there. Went a little overboard on the eyeshadow. I'm gonna touch up with some skin color again to bring it back down. Blend it in. From now on, it's all the micro stuff. 
a lot of um, magnif magnified glasses is required. This is the part where I just going back and forth, back and forth with all the details. Okay. Can I blend that eyeshadow in more? I can do it more. But other than that, we pretty much got the face down. Okay. You get the idea. Okay. Let's see if we're gonna do the, the eye pupil or not. It's almost 11, almost down to two hour. I wanna keep this within an hour only. Let's see how I look on the figure right now. And I will probably do the eyes later off camera since it's gonna require a lot of me off the camera anyway. And some of you guys have to go to sleep. Here's our figure. She look good. I like it. Let me see if I can put the head a little bit lower. Yeah, I think she looked really good. Okay, oh, the hand. Let's go back and touch up on the hand. Okay, let's pull her back where she stand. All right. Now let's do the hand. So we have two hands here. One's open palm and one is the fist. All right, let's make this hand realistic. I mean, not, I want to say realistic, but a little bit more detail on it instead of just leaving it the way it is. Let's pull out our flesh tone weathering set. Okay. We're going to be use, um, let's use the lightest one. The lightest one. Okay. And what we're going to do, since the hen already have paint on it, so it has some type of texture. We're just gonna rub the powder on the bottom of the hand, inside the hand. Okay, so Elsa is still her skin tone. Inside is white. Okay. And then we're gonna get a brush and wipe off all the extra. Okay, let's see how I look. You can add a few more layers if you want. I'm gonna go with another layer. Okay, and then wipe it off. Brush it off, the extra. You see how because we paint a layer of paint on it already, so the powder stay on real well. Now, if you overdo it, do not worry. Just get a little bit of poster putty and just dab it to clean up the extra that you don't want. And do a little bit on the side of the finger. You can do a eraser stroke or just dab on it. Okay. 
It's nothing too crazy. I'm gonna put it back on the figure. Now we have a hand that matches the head that we just painted. Okay. Might have gone a little bit overboard with the, the powder. Do not worry. You can always just use poster putty. Just tap, tap, tap. You see? Now, it's still lighter, but it's not as exaggerated as what we had earlier, right? It's just a little touch up, a little, a little something, okay? The other hand, same thing, the fist. Okay, since it's the fist, notice I'm drawing on the fingers, which that's very unrealistic. Wipe off the excess. Okay. And use your poster putty. You can open it up and get the inside and check this out. Just that finger is back to original color again. Okay. So it's inside, lighter, and darker outside, like how it should be. Okay, rub the powder into the paint. See the color of the skin, outside of the finger, it's back. If you got a little powder on top, outside, just dab it and clean it up. Let's put Hand back on. Okay, here's the whole entire paint tutorial for the storm. She looked great. I hope you guys like it. Definitely gotta make a new cape for her. I'll do that when time frees up. But she looked pretty good. Like that hair versus the original. The original is nice too. Don't get me wrong. Original is nice. Maybe it's even cartoon accurate since none of us seen the cartoon before. So I have no idea what she looked like in the cartoon. The original is really nice. But why not have options? Right? Okay. I'm gonna to use tonight to draw some eyeball for her and I'll post more picture on my Facebook page and I Instagram page. Other than that, I really thank all of you guys who come to support and stick with me this whole, this long, nearly two hours. We started at nine, okay? And uh, hopefully in the next few days, we'll be able to paint Hobby Brown too. Okay, but before we leave, I want to show you guys this awesome, awesome head. Okay. This is his Andrew head. It's beautiful. Very well sculpted. He sculpted, his, he also made these a fist and a mask. It's a very, very awesome, good looking Andrew head. The amount of detail he sculpted on this head. Look at all that hair detail. It's, it's wow. For uh, for SH Figure Out 112 scale, it's incredible. It's incredible. I love it. If you guys want some on this, I made a limited of 10 of these. Um, after painting this one, I highly recommend get the one without the little curl in the front. Reason why is because if you drop it, hit it those curls so thin 
it will just crack up on you. Okay. So he made me these without the curl and it's even more detail. Find a good painter to paint it or you can try to paint it yourself. Um, I'll be honest, it looks like there's not much detail there. But to paint a realistic head versus painting something like Storm or Gambit, that's more cartoony or comic-like, it, it's completely different. It requires lots of layer. Um, you see the eyes? Uh, I'll be honest, this head took me around six hours to finish. I'm not a professional painter, and this is actually my very, 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 very first time painting uh, a realistic actor's face. I never painted something like this before. This is my first time. I usually, usually just paint anime, cartoon, uh, comic, superhero from manga or cartoon. But yeah, this is, I think I did an okay job. Okay, I think I did an okay job. Not perfect. I would like to paint another one because I kind of know where I can improve on, but it looks pretty good, okay? So thank you guys for watching. I hope you guys learned something today or you know, give you guys some more confidence on painting. Come on guys, you know, paint, okay? Let's have some fun. It's not that hard. Especially some of you guys are able to get some of these model paints in your local paint shop, you know? Vallejo, okay? Try it, give it a try. Other than that, thank you guys for your support. I'll see you guys later. Good night.